Okay, so good afternoon. We have um, some early birds in the house. Um, so good afternoon. Um, I see Toby is here. I see Lekon. I see Chukuma. I see Ajayi. Uh, good afternoon, guys. You guys are early. Um, so we're just going to give you a couple of minutes. Uh, I mean, the the webinar officially starts at two p.m., so we're about four minutes early. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes. Um, allow people um join. Allow you guys to settle in. Um, before we kick off. point stash is finally going to be very useful to me. Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Um, glad to have all of you here. Um, just like Maxime was saying, we're gonna give it a few minutes before we kick off proper. Um, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is AK Orum. Um, I see a few familiar names. Um, I also see some names that are so completely new to me. So if you don't mind just putting in the chat box, your name, where you're calling in from or where you're dialing in from, um, so that we can just get familiar with who's in the room while we give it like five minutes before we kick off the meeting proper um, and you will kind of introduce us. Thanks.
Okay, so hi everyone. I'm just I think the chat box might be disabled. Um I don't know why. Um but if if you can't use the chat box, please use the QA section. Um just let us know where you're dialing in from. Um and if this is your first time joining or your repeat um attendee. Oluchuku from Delta State, um, Chibike Maduka from Abuja, first time. Uche, um, Uche, I know you. Dialing in from Potakot, welcome. Ken, oh, Ken, good afternoon to you. Um, repeat attendee, I know that for sure. From Lagos State, um, welcome. Welcome. Okay, well, um, I think we can, I think we can kick off um, just out of um, respect for everyone who came here early enough. Fortune from Lagos State, first timer. Glad to have you with us. Joshua Olamide, first time attendee from Lagos. I'm glad to have you with us. Um, welcome, guys. Okay, so let's 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 kick off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the Rise Investment Club meeting for the month of August. Um, so if you've been here before, month of October. Oh, did I say August? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, October. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So if you've been here before, you know um how these meetings go. You know um the purpose of these meetings. But if this is your first time, um, like I can see a uh, few first timers um in the audience, we hold these meetings during the last Saturdays of every month. Um, and they are termed, um, they are called the Rise Investment Club meetings. So the purpose of these meetings basically is we come together as a community and um, we, we speak about certain topics, um, finance related topics. Um, and the purpose is to get some actionable steps that we can take from, um, from these meetings and, you know, just go out there and make our um, financial lives a little bit better. Um, so the topic for today, is how to prepare your portfolio for a recession. Um, so for, for these meetings as well, um, sometimes we have guests, you know, so we get subject experts um, to, to come speak on, on these topics, but also sometimes we, we also do it in-house, um, just like today's one, um, just so also we can give our users and our prospective users and just people who are part of our community um, some great insights, right? So today I'm joined by AK. Um, AK, do you wanna, I know you already um, did a brief intro, but please just do another one um, for people who just joined and who may not know who you are. Sure, um, thanks Chibi. So my name is AK, I'm the founder of RiseVest. Uh, I'm also responsible for a lot of the processes that we use to manage our investments. Um, and so today's meeting, we primarily wanted to dive deep into um, thinking about a recession, thinking about how to structure your portfolio during that recession and how to also like manage your finances, protect your income and grow your finances even during and after a recession. So um, because of that, rather than have the guests, we decided to make it something in-house so that we can all just have a conversation. So it's great to be here. I've not attended for a while, but my team has always held it down. And I'm glad to kind of join them today so that we can talk about this. Thanks, Chibi. So should I dive right in or can you guys hear me? Because Chibi was, can you guys confirm if you can hear me? Because Chibi was, um, Chibi's internet seems to have been interrupted. Okay. Chibi, you're back. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I was kicked out for some reason. Um, All right. So, but yeah, I'm back. So yeah, should I just dive right into it so that we can try and take like half an hour, walk through the material and then have people ask us questions and talk generally. Is that cool? Yes, yes, please. Let's, let's go for that. Yes, please. 
Awesome. So, um, guys, um, please just, I know that the, the chat box might still be disabled for some of you. Please feel free to use the Q&A both for like any comments that you have. Um, but we generally like to have participation. We like people to ask questions. We like people to make their comments. And we'll actually go in during the call at different points and like try and answer some of those questions. Um, so the topic we're talking about today is how to prepare your portfolio for a recession, right? Um, so I don't know if there's anybody in this room who doesn't know what the definition of a recession is. Um, Chubi, can we confirm that the chat box is working for the, for, for the users? Um, yeah, so I think the chat box is disabled. Um, yes. All right, yeah. cool. So um, I'm sure most of us here have heard about the recession um, or what it, uh, or has heard about, okay, generally was described as a recession. But for the sake of our time, and also because the chat box is disabled, uh, we apologize for that, by the way. Um, but yeah, so let me just go into what the definition of a recession is. Um, as you all know, rather than like try to do slides, we just try and talk um, so that our attention, you know, we don't just sit back and look at what's going on on the screen. We actually participate in it. So a recession is generally a period where there is a slowdown in economic activity, right? Um, slowdown in economic activity, financial like tightening. Um, a lot of the, the, the causes are, you know, the change in sentiments or change in the final, financial position of either one country or generally the, the, the rest of the, pretty much global, at a global level, there's a change in the financial, financial situation. And because of that, people's sentiments turn negative and therefore people invest less. Um, people, they, people want to put less money into work. And so asset values tend to fall, economic activity tends to fall, and um, credit cycle, which is the availability of funding and financing, tends to reduce during that period. And it happens, it's, it's part of a regular feature of any economy. So there's no economy that just goes up all the time, right? It's almost like the way, you know, you breathe in and then you breathe out, right? So when you're breathing in, there's an expansion. And then when you breathe out, your, your, your body and your chest kind of like tighten. So the, the economy behaves the same way. There's an expansion period when credit is loose and people get access to financing and asset values are increased. And then there's a period when the economy then slows down and credit cycle tightens and asset values come down. And a lot of the time, the level of economic activity reduces. So these periods are described as recessions. Um, several things can trigger a recession, right? The, the one in 2020, which was very short-lived, was triggered by a global economic shutdown in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, right? Um, the one that people are anticipating now is caused by the level of inflation across the entire global economy uh, and the impact of that on several economies, on, on the cost of capital and the general financial situation. So, what we found out is that most people, most of the people that we call smart money, smart investors, wealthy people, financial advisors, large economic organizations like banks and corporations are all financially preparing themselves for a recession, right? Now that doesn't mean that it's guarantees that a recession will necessarily materialize, but all the indices, all the metrics that people measure and look at suggest that between early next year, Q1 and Q2 of next year, the economy might contract to the point where it's technically in recession. And so for most of these bodies, what they are starting to do is to tighten their financial belt, shore up their capital, and try and become more defensive in their finances. And so because what we do at Rise is not only to help people invest well, we also try and give people an understanding of the financial environment that they are operating in and the best way to navigate that environment. So we then said, it's a good thing for this month's meeting to focus on the potential recession that the world is facing and what we can do to prepare for it. So um, looks like Aziz can use the chat box. I don't know if that's true for everyone else, but if you can, yes. 
please comment on the chat box. So you did you figure it out? Yes, yes, yes. So I did. Um, so everyone can use the chat box now. Yeah. Awesome. Shout out to you. Thanks, Chubi. Um, and all the chicken. Thank you guys. So um what is driving the current recession? So let me, since we can use the chat box now, yes, Shoma, thank you. So can you guys give me, again, I've mentioned it already, but give me your first guess of what is driving the current inflation that, I, that is being, um, recession that is being expected. Oh, I think I gave it away. So what do you guys think is driving it? Inflation, level of inflation. Absolutely. There's one more thing. There's actually one more thing so that we can make it interactive. There's one major thing. Someone said Buhari. War. Yes. That's the that's the other major issue. War. So the rise in interest rates is tied to the level of inflation, right? Um, but yeah, the, the geopolitical risk caused by Russia and Ukraine's, you know, beef is bleeding into the financial markets, is affecting commodities. That's a good uh, someone mentioned another thing. Ayobami mentioned. The aftershocks of COVID and China lockdown plus energy crisis in Europe. So there is that overhang of China is still doing lockdowns. This global supply chain is still having some frictions. And another part of the aftershock of COVID is that the inflation that we're dealing with itself was triggered by a lot of central banks across the world pumping money into the system to try and prevent a recession or to take the world out of recession during the COVID uh, pandemic. And now that there's not enough supply because of the supply chain issues for all that money that is that people have, um, it's causing prices to shoot up. So Ken also said something, shortage of goods and services, which is another way of describing what's going on. So you guys are really on top of your game in terms of like what's happening and what's causing it. I appreciate that. It shows that we are at least informed as a community. So geopolit geopolitics is affecting monetary policy normalization, which is central banks raising their rates now to try and like tamp down inflation and also reflect the cost of capital. Um, commodity prices being all over the place with energy supply in Europe versus Russia, Nigeria's production being down, OPEC and US going back and forth. All of those things are impacting the, the com prices of commodities, especially energy and oil around the world. And in Nigeria for next year, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of this, but the government has actually made the decision to remove subsidy pretty much by the final days of the administration. They are going to remove the subsidy on flow on, on petrol, um, on refined petroleum, which means that most of the refined products from oil, like flour, like kerosene, and the rest of them that power our economy locally might also see their prices jump by a lot. Again, that's supposed to have, it's a more localized issue, but it's also going to have an impact on us financially. So with all of these things happening, the question then becomes, how do we as individuals, as a group, as a community, um, how do we respond to these issues? What are the things that we should start thinking about so that we can be prepared for whatever might come around? That's the, set, that's the crux of the conversation today. So the first thing is, for those of you who don't already, um, yeah, um, so Ayobami mentioned something regarding the subsidy removal, which is that, you know, it's, it's a good move to free this sector. It's a good long-term move, especially for the country's revenue profile. But yeah, in the short, in the short term, it will have that impact of it's almost like a price shock. Prices are going to increase within a very short period. So these are some things to factor in. So the first thing, the first major thing to think about, so the way, this is going to be more of a generalized conversation than a to-do list. And the reason we didn't go with the approach of a to-do list is because your individual circumstances might be different, but there are general th contexts that we can share that you can then action within your own reality. But the first thing is that because costs are going to increase, you want to have, one, the ability to absorb that price shock, which means your emergency funds, one, and also beyond your emergency fund, because your emergency funds are for an emergency, but also increasing significantly 
or to the extent that you're able to, your savings rates and lowering all expenses that you can actually lower. So there's something that uh, should be mentioned on the Telegram group. Please share the link to the Telegram group for anybody. Most people here are already part of that group, but everybody, anybody who is not in our Telegram group and wants to be in this conversation all the time um, can actually join that group and kind of like talk about these things. But we talked about um, we talked about your personal inflation rates being affected by the kind of things you spend on. And I, I really loved that, that topic that he shared because it means that if I can lower my expenses or I can spend less money on the things that um, their prices are going up, then even though inflation might be going crazy, my personal inflation rates might be a little bit more manageable because if I can maintain the same level of cost or even lower my cost during the period when everybody else's costs are increasing, then I'll be in a much better shape. So this is a period for everyone to really emphasize strong financial discipline, strong financial discipline. This is the period when you can compare the prices of what you get and say, okay, if I'm not using this service, can I get an equivalent or similar service at a lower price? Can I buy things in bulk? Can I get together with a group? Can I get together with my friends? Can I get together with other people that I'm close to? and purchase certain items in bulk so that the cost is lower. Are there certain things that are non-perishables that I can buy and store? Maybe not right away, but maybe as you come back from January um, and you realize that some of those things, their prices come down because there's not a lot of people buying them. Um, you can purchase certain things and purchase them for a long period, right? So there's other ways of, you know, so sometimes you buy things in bulk and the prices, the next prices are lower. You look for the time when, when is the best time to purchase certain things? Not, a, you know, not all, all the time. Like it's not every time that you go out to buy something that is good. So you know, let me use an example in my own personal life. It's almost a habit now. I know that Xmas people, you know, we always eat rice, right? We're Nigerians. Eating rice in Christmas is like a tradition. So two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I purchased a bag of rice and just sent it down to my village and it was at like 30,000 at the time fast forward a couple of weeks due to the flood and now increasing demand because we are getting into the end of October the 30,000 I spent to buy that now is like 45,000 that's 15k extra within like three weeks so there are certain things that you have to look get creative and look at your budget and if there's anybody in this room that does not have a budget at this point it bears repeating None of us are, unless you're Dan Gutte, there's none of us in this room that really has the freedom to just spend money without really thinking about where that money is going and how to make it impactful. So budgeting, increasing your financial discipline, increasing your emergency funds. If you've, if you've had a six month emergency fund and you can keep adding to it, please keep adding to it. We want to be extremely well prepared for whatever the financial position that will come out of what's going on generally. That's, that's one aspect of being prepared for a potential recession. Now, another thing that we've touched on again, which is just, this is just the basics, is trying to figure out how to invest more um, in, in USD or figuring out other ways of investing in dollar denominated instruments, both locally and globally because some of those investments, especially speaking from the perspective of rise, are going to chase returns wherever returns can be found. Because no matter what kind of recession we face, there are always pockets of opportunity that exist at a global level. Um, so the third thing is to figure out what are some investments that are resilient enough, some assets that are resilient enough that even during a recession, they are going to do relatively okay. Um, so beyond, again, I'm, I'm trying to always start from not just what we have on rise, but other aspects. So for the general economy in Nigeria right now, it's going to become extremely important to have access to export-oriented industries. That's going to become really, really critical. Export-oriented industries, export-oriented assets. 
So whether it's companies, so I know some people who invest in businesses that sell agricultural commodities abroad. You know, I know some people that is, you know, whether it's, you know, food, packaged goods, you know, fish, um, fish farming, but they process fish processing, things that are meant for exports. Um, those are some, those of us that have access to people like that. And we're talking to a few of them that we might allow, like put, bring into our community, things that we know are export oriented. Other things, there are some companies like Okomo Oil that also deal with a lot of exports and they deal with something that is in demand year in, year out, right? So those are some of the things that you can start to look out for even in your own space and say, okay, what are some things? Another example are people that do a lot of things around recycling uh, because they then export those to countries where they're gonna be processed and reused and then re-imported back. There are opportunities like that within your environment that you can connect to and say, okay, you know what? This is the kind of business that I want to play in or invest in or participate in, right? Whether Okomo oil that is listed on the stock exchange or companies, um, like uh, I, I know that I know a few agricultural commodity exporters that would allow individuals to come in. Um, there are a few platforms like um, Afri Exchange, right? The the commodities exchange in Abuja, I think, Afex, that have certain commodities that are more export oriented. And then coming to what we have on Rise, um, we have. So we have data going back to all the way to like 1970s. We've talked about this several times where our real estate portfolio um, is mainly designed to be resilient even during a recession because you know the rental demand, people are going to cut down on a lot of things, but they always want to keep where they want to stay, right? Where they want to live. Those kind of things are very, very in demand even during a recession. In fact, when... Uh, recessions are happening. Some people who sell their own residence will also switch to renting. So there are periods when, as long as the the like the rental market sometimes even increases during a recession. So it's part of the reason we have that uh, in the portfolio. Another one is fixed income. One of the funnier things about this situation period, this period right now, is that when you look at the data right, which we're not going to, again, because of the short time involved, we're not going to lean too deep into, but when you look at the data, you find out that people's debt levels are actually pretty stable. Companies' debt levels are actually pretty stable. They have enough cash. So as rates are increasing, fixed income opportunities are actually expanding, especially in developed markets. In developing markets, there's a lot of pressure because some of those uh, fixed income debts are held in dollars and it's affecting their finances. But for the, for the rise that allows you to hold this income in other economies, um, some of them, the opportunities are actually increased. And that was something that shocked me because some other recessions, fixed income and debt securities usually tend to be affected a lot. But every, every recession or every downturn tends to behave a lot differently. So in this case, we're actually seeing like some banks are reporting higher uh, profits because the loans and fixed income instruments that they carry on their portfolios are reporting higher interest rates. So RISE is a good place to put in your funds, especially for real estate and fixed income because of the nature of those assets and the current recession that we're dealing with. So if you have more questions about RISE plans, please reach out to Hello at RISE first or join the Telegram group and we can talk about that a little bit more. So one of the things that we're gonna do for the for the remaining time that we're going to speak on this and then you guys can come come in with you know i already see some questions coming up but please prepare more of your questions and all so we're going to try and run through so the app is down today because we're doing like a a maintenance so we we spread it across three saturdays and we've sent out emails and notifications that for the last two saturdays and this one we are we are basically updating and, and um, doing maintenance on the core of our back end, which means on those Saturdays, the app will not be working. So, but by Monday, it should be good to go. Um, so we're gonna talk about some do's and don'ts of a recessionary period. And then I'm going to share some extra um, passive income and wealth building tips 
for getting through or increasing your income or you know protecting your income or making extra money on the side while this recession is going on, right? So do's and don'ts to get you through this period. Another passive income opportunity. Those of you in the Telegram group, I've shared some of these tips already in the group last week. I know I shared a couple, but there's a couple of new ones that I didn't share before that I added. Because again, this is what we are here for. We're always looking for how can we bolster our financial knowledge, but also how can we link the community to opportunities of making money. So if you're not on that group, please join. And if you're already in that group, invite your people to join. Now is the best time to be a part of a group like this because some of the things that we share, we're not always going to repeat them. So if you're in the group, you're going to learn some of these things and it's going to help you and the people around you. So send an invite if you've not already so that more people can join in. So, but let's quickly do the do's and don'ts. We're pulling up on the half hour mark so that you guys can also, we'll take some of your questions. The first thing is, please don't try to time the market. Don't try and say, oh, let me withdraw my money. And then when the market is improved, I'll put it back. Here's the reason. First, when the market recovers, it usually recovers at random. So, and when they recover, the first early days of recovery, it jumps really high. So most people who leave the market when the market is down and they're thinking, well, when it improves, I'll come back. They miss out on the biggest increases. And then they will rejoin the market after that boost has already happened. And so your returns tends to be lower, right? Than if you had just stayed, if you had just stayed the course, right? Um, if you had just stayed the course, then you would actually just participate in that recovery. Because like we said at the beginning, recessions are like, it's like breathing in and out. Economies will contract, but eventually they will expand again. And nobody can time that process. Nobody can say this is when it's going to happen. So for us, generally, the idea is try and stay invested. And there's something we call dollar cost averaging, which is just have a fixed amount that you spend, spending in quotes on your investments. That is money you just put into investments and consider it's gone. I've spent that because when asset values are down, that same amount of money will buy more. We we'll invest, we we'll get more investment. And when asset values are high, then it will get less. So dollar cost averaging is a good way to consistently invest and buy at low prices and buy more when prices are low and buy less when prices are high. Ayobami also said something about the fact that we're talking about a US and European market recession and Nigerian recession being a different ball game. So generally the Nigerian economy responds to the global economy, right? So there are some points where there's some deviation, right? Um, but generally speaking, the global economic climate that tends to impact the Nigerian economic climate. And there's multiple reasons for that, including like our source of financing, external versus internal, our cost of capital, the fact that we are pegged to the dollar as a currency and economy, and a bunch of other things. So um, the, 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 the preparation for a recession is not that we can say, oh, by March next year, Nigeria will enter into a recession, but it's just that general US, Europe, and the general global economy is already showing signs of recessionary activity. And so we also need to be prepared for that. Um, so do, so another thing I was about to say is, it's possible that we've actually hit the bottom already in a way. This year, stock market has been down by, it was down by 28, almost 30%. Um, and because we had, a lot of growth stocks. We've actually even experienced slightly higher loss than that. Um, so, but we've already seen some signs. Like last this week, um, US GDP recorded like a positive growth, about 3.6, which is the first positive GDP growth number in the last two, three quarters, right? Um, so we've also seen like four weeks in a row of the Dow actually ending on a positive note, right? So it could be that the worst has already passed and that we are gonna see a recovery from this point. It could also easily be that we, we're gonna see the markets drop another 50% from this point. Nobody actually knows for sure. So for instance, Facebook has lost 86% of its value so far. It could drop further, it could start gaining. But when, you, when we focus, what we focus on is the fundamentals. What is the reality of the business and how is it going to continue to grow and evolve in the long term? Once you can keep your eye on that, the current prices might not really matter as much as long as you're only investing 
money you can afford to invest and money you're not going to need in the short term. So um, don't try and time the markets. Nobody can tell you whether it's going to go up or keep going down. Just invest consistently the amounts you can invest and focus on just the long term. The second, please invest more in dollar denominated assets. So the dollar has gained across every major currency in the world, including Naira, right? Um, and having your assets in dollar, when the dollar price is in gaining, then that means that your money is actually growing plus the returns that those assets are generating. Because during recessionary times, the US tends to be like a safe haven where most people want to push money to the US for, for safety because of its market, because they tend to manage recessions better because their treasuries, treasury bills and their government's ability to pay back is stronger because of it, it being the dollar reserve currency or the global reserve currency. And that means that during recessions, the dollar will gain. And so it's always a good idea to invest more in dollar denominated assets at this time. Um, another thing to do is to understand your industry, get really deep into your industry and become very indispensable because a lot of companies are going to be thinking about reducing their workforce or cutting down on their team sizes and their payroll sizes. And you want to be someone that is indispensable to the operations or do, bringing in enough value that you're, you're going to be, um, the, the odds are that you will be retained. Um, and another thing to do is always look at other things you can do to within your industry or outside of your industry to also bolster your income. So you have more income security because again, a lot of companies are going to be making a lot of tough decisions based on the financial climates that they're in. So within your industry, look for ways to become indispensable, look for ways to earn side income, look for ways to protect and, and kind of like have more security within the income you're already making and understand how to be relevant in your industry with or without your job because this period tends to be a very difficult one for companies. And because we've come out of the growth period, so many companies have a lot of people and they're like, you know what, we're going to find ways to trim down the size of the team. This year, so many global companies have announced a lot of massive layoffs. Thousands of people have been let go. Um, that hasn't really materialized. It, there's some cases within Nigeria where some of that has happened, but it hasn't been very widespread, but it tends to happen during recessionary periods. So you have to be prepared for that and make sure that you're going to be good regardless. Another thing to do is to pay down debts. Interest rates are going up. If you can aggressively pay down whatever debts you owe and do not borrow, now is not the time to get into huge chunks of financial commitments where with if you experience a liquidity crunch, you will not be able to meet up with those commitments. So now is the time to avoid them. And if you already have debts that you're sitting on, now is the time to try and get them, either pay them down or find a way to lower their interest by maybe borrowing at a lower rate to pay off the ones that have at a higher rate. So now is the time to aggressively pay down debts. Um, if you're a business owner, explore raising capital, increase your capital, lower your expenses and figure out how to keep your money Keep your company profitable, or at least close enough to profitability that you're not going to face a lot of financial constraints. Another thing to do is, again, we've already talked about this, cut your expenses, increase your savings and investment rates. Look at your, one of the places that we've seen that there's a lot of room to cut. It might not sound like it makes a lot of difference, but one, your entertainment, your, your entertainment budgets, the, the movie going, the Netflixes, the music subscriptions, those kind of things. How much how much time do you go out to the bar? How much do you spend at nights out socially? Um, you know, all one bears, all those type of things. Now might be a good time to look at yourself and say, okay, you know what? Let me trim down on these type of things and only focus on necessities. Um, another thing is for those of us who, again, I'm guilty of this. Maybe I'm always eating out. I've had a conversation like, okay, it looks like we're going to have to figure out how to cook more inside because a friend of mine, cooked for 3,000 naira and about six, seven of us ate that same meal. If I had eaten out, 3,000 naira is like maybe one or two people's food max. So it's interesting how much further money can go if you're able to just do things at home and kind of like make sure that you, and it lasts even lasts longer. So things like that will become very necessary. Um, don't sell your investments because you're experiencing a loss. Please, that, that's one of the things that 
mostly people who are not either uninformed or not able to manage their emotions when it comes to their investments or people who have invested money that they actually need, right? So if your investments are down right now, it's a recession. It's going to bounce back up when the economy starts to expand again and asset values start to increase again. So now it will be a huge mistake to sell those investments now. If anything, the smart money knows that as asset values come down, the expected returns that you're going to make from investing in those assets at that point is higher. So now would be time to actually invest more again if you have the cash flow to do that. I right, let me ask the question about what's the long-term outlook for USD precipitated by the multipolar approach by countries rebasing their trade currencies away from dollar and putting forward an old model that looks plausible for various economic stability. So in, in simpler English, that question is, people are starting to say, why is dollar just the, re the reserve currency that all of us have to use? And why are we propping up the dollar and making it easier for the US to be a safe haven in detriment to all the rest of us? So mainly China, Russia, a few other countries are having those conversations because they're like, we have massive economies and we can trade with each other. Why don't we all just have different currency reserves so that different trade partners can settle in whatever currency that is necessary for them? Um, so what is the long-term outlook? To be honest, I don't know. And let me, let me tell you the things that we do know. One is current countries have higher amounts. So different central banks around the world have more, a, a much higher percentage of their savings in dollars than in the past. So 10, 20 years ago, it used to be 60% of the central bank's uh, reserves are in dollars. Then at some point it was 70. Right now it's closer to 85. So even though there's something, and I think people know part of that push is because the dollar is actually becoming stronger and more and more people are actually preferring to hold their reserves in dollars. And America has shown the willingness to support their status as global reserve currency, even with military action if necessary, because it's, this, it's a strong component of their power. But general economic changes also come with sometimes political changes. Um, and so nobody can really tell whether or not that status will be maintained. And if not, what it might trigger like a real conflict at a global level. But those are things that are beyond our own ability to predict. What we can do is play with the facts in front of us. But regardless of what happens, the America is a 60 trillion economy and still strong enough that regardless of what happens, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of risk in holding dollar assets, whether in the current or in the long term, because what any currency that you can mention alternatively, whether it's the euro, whether it's the Chinese um, um, Chinese uh, renminbi, or whether it's the Russian, whatever it is, they have more weakness than the US dollar at this point. So those are some of the things that can happen in the future. Um, again, trying to be conscious of our time here. Um, so don't take on hefty commitments. Um, if you're in a position where your risk is, the risk appetite is high and you don't have too much to lose at a point, um, it might not be a bad idea to, and you have the resources. So your risk appetite is high. Your ability to take on risk is high. Maybe you're younger, maybe you're single, maybe you have enough resources that you want to start a business and you believe fundamentally that that business can work in this environment. It might not be a bad idea. Again, you just have to make sure you cross all your T's and dot your I's in terms of the risk you're taking because any business that can succeed during recessionary times tends to then do even much, much better during expansionary times. Um, another thing to, so one of the things to don't do, don't take on hefty financial commitments. Don't start your building project now unless you already have the funds in place and you're not worried about the financial obligation you know, don't try and like take on like a huge uh, project again, unless you're prepared for it. There's caveats to every rule. Um, please don't also overthink. Recessions are not the end of the world. Economies will contract, they will expand back. It's happened in 2020, happened in 2008. It happens all the time. And most of the time people use that opportunity to buy assets cheaply. Facebook is trading at levels that it hasn't traded since 2016. Other people, other assets are more affordable. Some housing houses now are more affordable. So the rental yield is improving. People that have the finances and have the savings 
emergency funds and have the bulk cash flow can actually snap up assets now that will translate into them becoming more wealthy when the economy bounces back and you can be one of those people. Um, last thing I'll say on the do's and don'ts is please network, network a lot. Keep your resume and your CV updated. Look out for where there's opportunities or where opportunities are opening up because in every recession, there's always the seed of new things being planted and the experience you have, the network you have, the people that can say, oh, I know someone that can help with this um, can actually be the difference between you latching into those opportunities or not. Um, so I'm gonna take two minutes, run through some past um, three minutes, pa passive income opportunities or some things that you can do to bolster your income. And then we'll spend the remaining 10, 15 minutes just answering your questions. So um, the first thing is right now, investing in digital assets. So there are some websites where you can, again, things that don't require you to be in a developed market. You can do them from here. You purchase certain uh, domain names, you flip them for a profit if there's demand for them. It takes some work to get into, but you can start. There's a website called flipper.com, F-L-I-P-P-A.com that will help you kind of like get started understanding which domains are in demand, picking up domains and finding out ways to list them and sell for a profit. Um, we mentioned some of the tips like usertesting.com, trymatter.com, where you can go and review apps, review products, and you make from like $10, $20 per hour. You can make $50 to $100 per session, giving people feedback around how their products are performing. Again, the demand for that is going to be going up because a lot of people are going to be exploring how to launch products into the market. Let's talk about Upwork. There are certain people that I know um, that run Substacks, where is a subscription, you run a blog, on something that you have domain expertise in and people will subscribe and pay you a monthly subscription to be able to just read some of those things. You have to make it actionable, well-researched, it has to be relevant. But if you write something that is very relevant, people will pay you for it. Um, another thing that we found out is consulting, right? Funny enough, Nigerian tax code actually charges some of the lowest tax rates on income made from, from consulting. So if you have expertise, you have the knowledge, you have, you have the access and the network, you can actually put your name out there and say, oh, I can help you walk through this. During recessions, people try and cut down on their full-time staff. And so they'll bring in consultants to help them achieve certain things. So now might be a time to start your consulting gig and bolster your income and find other ways of making yourself relevant within your industry. And guess what? You earn, your normal taxes is somewhere in the 20 something percent. Consulting income is taxed at 10%, so you get to keep more of it. So that's another benefit for you in taking that approach. Um, last thing is, um, second to last is, you know, explore investing more in dividend stocks. We're we are coming out with a portfolio that creates a basket for just dividend earning stocks so that you can invest, put money there and just collect dividends if you have the financial capacity to do that. For instance, on Rise, if you invest $100,000 into your real estate plan, you can start getting returns of roughly $1,000 every month. $100,000 is not something that a lot of us can put in all at once. So you can come and say, okay, fine, let me start with what I have. Or when we create a portfolio, you can say, let me just invest in a basket of dividend stocks so that you don't have to go and be looking around. You know that there's some income coming and it's in dollars, which means if the rates, in, uh, if interest uh, exchange rates are impacted, the money will actually grow. Um, and then the last thing is create a course, right? Create a course, um, put it online, go to gumroad.com, write an ebook on something you have expertise in, uh, make sure that it's relevant to a specific audience, self publish it on Amazon and market it to them figure out ways that you make returns or make money from things that people can continue to buy repeatedly, whether or not you do the extra work involved. So these are some of the ways that you can go ahead and start prepping yourself, earning more income, protecting your existing income, making yourself more relevant, and more importantly, investing through this period so that you can buy assets cheaply and becoming extra financially disciplined with your budget, with your emergency funds, with every other thing that you do so that if the recession ends up not coming, you're still in a good shape. And if it ends up coming, you're in a better position to weather it. So those are some of the things that we have and that we wanted to discuss and share. Um, the link to our Telegram group has been shared. We're going to share it again. For those of you who want to continue to have this type of conversations, absolutely have it on there. That's what we're here for. But other than, otherwise, 
Um, we're going to take on some questions and the comments that you guys have already made so that we can wrap up the rest of this call, um, just kind of talking through what we've discussed so far. So thank you. I, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was, please give, give me some feedback around like the usefulness of what we've shared so far, as you also share those questions that you have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, AK. Um, that was very insightful, like Choma said. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, um, we've come to the end of um, our pre presentation from our end. Um, but please, if you have any questions, um, shoot them in the uh, Q&A um, section and we'll just take them. So we'll be on the lookout for your questions. Okay, so Basi asked, what are some available ways you can make money online? Like I mentioned some earlier, but you didn't get them. So there's usertesting.com, there's Upwork, where you can post, um, there's Clear Voice. Um, so Upwork.com is a, is a freelancing website where you can post any type of task and people will hire you to do them. Clear Voice and Scribi, um, we're going to share them in a bit. Um, these are sites where you can go do transcription, you know, um, editing, writing, copy editing, all those type of things. And you make some money doing that up to $800 a month, sometimes up to $1,000. Um, you need a PayPal account for some of those. Um, we also talked about, um, you know, writing an ebook, doing a sub uh, stack, um, getting uh, subscriptions like that or selling, self-publishing your ebook and having people, you know, just buy them for like usually a small amount of money, but then you make a lot of, um, you make a lot of, um, sales and kind of like make money doing that. So there's a lot more of these opportunities. If you go, if you join our Telegram group and you ask, we can share the thread where we talked about this in more detail, or we can share some of those links with you. Um, so the the question about uh, US dollar rates. Um, so we we increased the rates earlier this week because we secured a we locked in a rate. Um, probably at some point in the next, in the coming week is going to go up because again, it's really whatever the market delivers. So um, the faster people fund, um, then the faster we run out of whatever block we secure and the more the, the rates that, um, that we, you know, the more we go back to the market and those rates get updated, um, it's not really something that we control. Um, Okechi, Okechi Okori asked, um, saw some names of the companies where their shares are invested and can we throw more light on how it works um so you you can't invest in a specific company on rice so, okay i want to invest in apple let me go invest in apple on rice no what we do is we select companies that we know are doing really well or have the potential to do well in the future um and then we create a basket of about 20 to 30 of them and we basically then when you buy the uh, stocks plan we basically put it into those companies. So the idea is that, for instance, Facebook has lost 86% of its value. If you had invested in just Facebook, your money would have gone down by 86% this year. But because on Rise Stocks Plan, you have Facebook, you have Apple, you have Google, you have Amazon, you have Trade Desk, you have other companies. So the overall portfolio is down because the market is down, but it's not down by a crazy amount. And we know that when it starts to gain, it's also going to bounce back. Like we have hedging strategies where we expose ourselves to more, like we basically short the markets when the market is going down to try and give us some cushion, right? So there's multiple ways, but what we do is basically spread the risk across a number of stock positions and then make it easy for you to just buy into those um, stocks automatically when you fund the stocks plan. So we're going to like roll out like a few more curated portfolios across the stocks plan as well, especially now that there's a lot of demand for other kinds of stocks. But generally that's how those work. We don't invest, you don't invest in a single stock or trade a specific stock on rise because we've seen that that's very expensive and the results and the risk are not usually in your favor. Um, so Lawyer Adams is asking the same question about the websites where we can make additional income, please. Let's um, let me share some of the 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 websites here. 
Try Matter is an app. Flipper.com is for domain, domain flipping. Um, Upwork is a, is a freelancing website. There's another one like it's called Fiverr. Um, Clear Voice is a transcription website, Scribby as well. So there's multiple of these resources. We have shared a bunch of them here, but I recommend joining our Telegram group and so that we can give you, there's a list of them that we can, um, that we can always share. And you can ask specific questions. Some of these um, websites need PayPal for you to be able to um, participate in them. So, yes. Um, Ebele is going to be on rise, ideally by the end of this, well, before the end of November, we're gonna have some additional portfolios rolling out um, so that people can also do some like certain interests like dividend earners or growth or defensive stocks, you'll be able to like invest specifically in those. Um, so it's in the works. It's part of the reason we are doing the maintenance we're doing on the app now is so that we can basically start adding new additional plans much more easily and you'll be able to start investing in them through the rise um, app. So what's the update on USD withdrawal? So USD withdrawal is still happening. It just takes a lot longer than it used to. So several companies like TransferWise, uh, um, TransferWise I know, um, there's this other one, uh, shit, I don't remember their name, um, that basically have announced that they are suspending sending money to, sending dollars to Nigeria because the process has become so complicated. And at a global level, the compliance issues sending money to Nigeria is just crazy, right? So it's impacting us as well. So we can send money to Nigeria. It just takes a long time because they're doing extra compliance checks and so on and so forth. Um, so we've, we're, we're exploring other providers who can shorten that time for us, but some of them have fees involved. But in the meantime, the fastest and easiest way especially for those who funded in Naira is to withdraw in Naira with your Naira equivalent because that way you still get the Naira equivalent at the current black market rate of the dollars, but we don't have to wait for the dollar settlement. However, if you're willing to wait a little bit longer, you're still going to get your money in USD. It's just, again, Nigeria is not the easiest place to send funds to at this moment. That's what's going on, right? So um, we'll still share more details on that because again, we, we're still having back and forth conversations with providers to try and make that process easy. Our own is to try and manage your investments and grow your own money, right? So the part about sending money back and forth, we typically work with third parties to make it possible. And so when those third parties are now saying, ah, Nigeria is a problem, if it was not Nigeria, we can do it faster, then those problems then affect our users. But we're working around the clock to try and see what we can do about that. Um, if you want to withdraw in US to offshore bank accounts or non-Nigerian accounts, absolutely, that's still happening. It's it can be done, um, but it has to be tied to your name, and it has to match certain certain details have to match. So it's easier to send an email to hello at risevest.com so that the specifics of your situation can be addressed. Because even what I'm saying here um, could be different from what's currently going on. Um, I know that we we tend to be up here a lot, but I believe me, there's like a lot of different people who manage a lot of different processes. And that those processes are evolving very rapidly based on what the market is going on. So um, the best way to get the most up-to-date information is to send inquiries to hello at risevest.com so that we can address your specific situation. Um, is RiseVest hiring um, in for some roles? Absolutely. Um, if you if you if you know chief people officer um, or certain other roles that we're trying to um, beef up, um, send an email to hiring at risevest.com um, because again, there are people that their responsibility is to stay on top of that. Um, and they would be in a much better position to give you specific answers. Um, but are we hiring? Almost always, yes. Um, so yeah. PayPal works in Nigeria, but I think receiving money into a PayPal account open in Nigeria is a bit tricky. Um, so you have to check those, I mean, it does check what, what people's current policies are, or with what I've seen is also, if you know someone that lives in a jurisdiction, has a little bit more access, you can work with them and agree 
very strict written down agreement on how you guys are going to be working together so that stories that touch will not enter. Um, Immaculate asks, now that cost of living in the UK is high with rents increasing, um, how will this impact our real estate investment? So we don't have a portfolio in the, US, in the UK at the moment. Our real estate portfolio is concentrated in the US and housing prices are starting to come down in the US, which is actually pretty good for us because then the houses we buy right now, their rent, the money we make from their rent is going to be higher than if the prices kept going high, right? So um, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because you have lower valuation on the properties, but what we're investing for is the rental cash flow. So if I bought a house that was renting out for 1,000 a month, and I bought it for 100,000, I'm making 12%. But if that same house goes from 100,000 to 80,000, now I'm making closer to 18%, right? So it's actually a pretty good deal for me. And let me, let me make sure my math is correct. I'm just quoting that number off the top of my head, 12,000 or 80,000. So it's 15%, right? Um, so the lower prices actually works out to better rental yields for us because we are long-term investors and what we care about, yes, the appreciation is nice, but the core thing we're investing for is the rental cash flow. How can you shut down a fake rice group on Telegram? Almost impossible. Trust me, we've tried. Chubi will be a me with mess. A new one springs up every day. So the things that you need to do is if someone adds you to a, a, a quote-unquote rice platform, understand that we're never going to ask you to send money to an account that is not coming from our channel and does not bear the name of Rise West Technologies Limited. And most of the time your funding is going to happen on the app. So don't hand money over to an individual. Don't invest in anything an individual shares with you in the name of Rise West. And we have official links. Even if you are, if you are, if you are in doubt, go to our website. We just shared the link here again. Or go to our website. If you go to risevest.com and click on community, you'll see the link to our official Telegram. So we're working on some verification for our social media and Telegram pages, but there's really no way to actually shut down um, those fake platforms. Advice for those who funded in USD. Enjoy your returns, my guy. <laughs> like um, the returns are going to come in in dollars. And when you withdraw, you're going to get your withdrawal in dollars, especially if, if you're in Nigeria, you still get it. It'll take longer. But if, you're, if, you're, if you didn't fund from Nigeria, it might be a little bit easier to get those funds to you. So we've answered a lot of these questions. Chubi, I want to hand the microphone back to you because um, we're pushing up against our time. It's been a very insightful time. And I love the questions. We really appreciate those of you who attended. Um, Chubi, please. Um, whatever, any conclusions and statements before we wrap up. All right. Well, so thank you so much for that, AK. Um, thank you to everyone who joined on this. I think it's a healthy number. We have uh, over like 100 people who stayed the whole hour. Um, I think that's quite healthy. Um, so I just want to touch one more time on the um, fake um, investments groups um, on Telegram. Um, Telegram is a public space. Um, we can't stop um, the creation of these groups. Um, for some reason, um, these people like RiseVest a lot, so they usually create, um, I don't know, they don't pick other, because I'm part of other Telegram channels, right? They don't pick other people, they usually pick Rise. Um, so like Ege said, we would never ask you for um, personal details. No one will ask you for your pin. Um, I mean, if you chat me up and you have an, a certain issue, I might ask you for your email address, but that's because I want to pass that to the customer service team to deal with that. Um, like AK said as well, most of your funding will happen on the app. Um, sometimes if people have trouble with the app we do have bank accounts that we do share but um in case you have any doubts um my 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 handle is dot on telegram um you'd if you're chatting with anyone there's there's tags that we have on our telegram right so if there's a if you're talking to like a rice person you should see you know rice staff or admin right next to it um if if you're not speaking to anyone that has that tag right next to their name you're just talking to you know like i said it's a public group anyone could um join you know as long as they're not breaking our rules they can stay on there 
Um, but yes, it's been a good, um, it's been a good session. Um, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, I hope that a lot of the things that we take from this um, are things that like we put into action because the most important thing is really action. Uh, there's no point having all this great knowledge if you're not going to put it into practice. So we need to become people who put these things into action. Um, we've posted the Telegram group, um, the link to the Telegram group a few times. So this a recording of this um, meeting will be shared to all of us in three days. Um, so if you attended this, if you if even people that didn't attend this but registered will get a recording of this. Is it over? Yes, America, it's over. It's been an hour. I mean, it's it's a Saturday. What do you want? <laughs> and now I'm kidding. Yes, it's over. These um these meetings last for an hour. Um, so yeah, and uh, please join the telegram. We'll, we'll continue to have conversations um about this. AK said a lot of things on this call. We're going to break them into smaller conversations in our telegram channel you know, over the course of the week. So please, you definitely want to join that. Um, but yes, at this point, um, thank you so much, guys, for attending. Um, if you have any product questions, the email is hello at risevest.com. The website is www.risevest.com for um, all your, um, you know, research purposes. So yes, um, thank you, guys. AK, thank you again for taking our time to come do this with us. Um, see you guys. Um, same time next month last saturday of next month last month my um would probably be um next month will probably be the last one we're looking towards doing a fiscal investment club meeting just to wrap it up um for the year um we'd like to see everyone who's in the city um but yes um enjoy the rest of your your afternoon guys um thank you Ike. um bye guys bye,